We were asked to do a video for Herbie. Uh, and we were also asked to do a video for Herbie that didn't feature him much. Because for whatever reason, MTV at the time weren't playing black artists. And we were going, well, why? Uh, they just weren't. They just weren't playing black artists. So they wanted a video that was that just was begging to go into high rotation for whatever reason. And it's like, well, what does that mean? I mean, this was, again, it was the early days of MTV, I think. And round about this time, probably about a month earlier, I'd seen a a program on television, a local program that featured a five minute slot about this um, sculptor, this artist called Jim Whiting, who made these grotesque hydraulic driven robots. And I managed to record it on this excuse for a video tape recorder that I had, recorded this segment, uh, and th thought no more about it. I just kept it because it was interesting. And then this track landed on our desk, and and it was like, that sounds like this looks. Is there a way that we can make the two work together? And there was, but there was a sort of. You have to understand that, that back then, one didn't have to go, thank God, through the process of presenting a treatment to anybody and then sitting around a table with a dozen marketing people and label representatives and executives and it was it was much more um, it was much more about trust we like your work we like the films you've made so far would you do one for our artist and you were kind of left alone to do that you were given a certain amount of money very rarely was it a lot of money, but you were given a certain amount of money and then you were to deliver it at the end. That's what it was about. It was about trust. And this was one of those situations. We kind of gave them a vague synopsis of, of what we were hoping to achieve, but even we didn't know that we could. Um, and so we, we went to visit Jim at his strange house, which was full of bits of bodies hanging on the walls, not real bodies. Um, and he Thank you made for clarifying. New... No, I'm glad, yes, it was very bizarre. It was. I remember we banged on the door and we looked through a crack and we could see torsos lining the corridor. It was like, oh, what are we getting ourselves sitting for here? <laughs> And he lived amongst all his sculptural creations. It was, uh, it was astonishing. But he liked the track. He liked what we wanted to do. And so we concocted a plan. We built a set that was a facsimile of a, of a house. And we would populate the house with his creations. Um, and we would film Herbie separately on another day and pump him into a TV monitor that was installed in this house. That was essentially the idea. Uh, and we, we didn't film to music because with all these hydraulic pumps, pumping and humping, we wouldn't have heard it anyway. We just spent the day filming details of all these strange creatures and objects. Um, whilst filming Herbie from the previous shoot on, on the TV monitor. And then we filmed the beginning shot and the end shot, um, looking out the street near the studio. And then we went into an edit, not knowing how the hell we were going to fit all this stuff together, um, and discovered that we could, that we wanted to scratch the film footage to match the scratching sounds on the record itself. Now, you, you, you can't do that with film, or you couldn't do that with video. So we had to, tr when you edit video, or when we used to edit video back then, we shoot on film and we transfer all that material onto videotape. So 
But in this case, we transferred it all twice, once going forwards and once going backwards. So all those little tiny cuts, we were cutting between backwards and forwards. We weren't doing this as you do with, mm -hmm. a, with a record. We were actually physically cutting. And it took, again, it was like, you know, it has to be a 24-hour session that burnt us, burnt us out completely. But again, at the end of it, looking at it, it was like, we love it, but they're going to kill us. <laughs> Big, if, if you can imagine seeing that for the first time, right, back in whenever it was, it this was, like was so, yeah, okay, so there was nothing like this no. out there on television, let alone MTV, MTV being quite extreme in some of the stuff, but there was nothing like this. So it was like, we kind of knew that it would either go down hugely well and get played to death, Otherwise, we no one would play it, and we'd end up in front of a firing squad. It was <laughs> going to be one of those. There was no, there was no middle ground. Thank goodness right. it was the first one. I think I think it picked <laughs> up a lot of picked up a lot of awards at the first MTV uh, award show as well. But I think Herbie, when Herbie first saw it, didn't know what the hell he was looking at. He's like, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> And who can who can blame it, you know? But it was like again, we much much as we knew when we'd uh, finished mixing, I'm not in love. We knew that when we finished editing this, that it was something had happened. We'd done something interesting, mm -hmm. maybe a bit more than interesting here, that, that may knock a few people sideways.